1896. Detroit is a city of 250,000 people. A city already famous for manufacturing ships, steam engines, and stoves. A city about to undergo extraordinary change. The reason for this change? The automobile. Detroit's first car was built by Charles King. He was one of the first to see the potential of the automobile. But soon, hundreds of companies sprang up, building cars and supplying parts. The leader of them all was Henry Ford. In 1903, the Ford Motor Company sold its first car, a two-cylinder Model A. Only seven years later, in 1910, Ford opened his plant in Highland Park. Four years after that, a thousand cars a day rolled off his new assembly line. General Motors, the Dodge Brothers, Hudson, Packard, and many others experienced tremendous growth. And as the automobile industry grew, people poured into Detroit. Some came from the farms of Michigan and the Midwest. Many came from the South. And still more came from faraway places like Italy and Poland. They'd all heard that the auto industry offered good pay for hard work. And this new industry was tough, constantly changing and highly competitive. Many companies folded, others merged, but a few were huge successes. Detroit grew almost overnight. Skyscrapers, offices, theaters, and museums sprang up. New neighborhoods took shape alongside the streetcar lines. Jobs were plentiful and wages were good. People had money to buy cars, to move into new houses, and to enjoy the good life. By 1929, Detroit's population was 1.6 million, more than five times that of 1904. It was now America's fourth largest city. Almost a quarter of a million people worked in Detroit's auto industry. Ford Motor Company alone was producing one and a half million cars a year. After 25 years of dramatic change, cars had made Detroit the undisputed motor city. North America, Michigan, and Detroit, the motor city. Detroit wasn't the only city in Michigan to begin building cars at the turn of the century. Lansing, Flint, and Pontiac were among the others, but it certainly grew the fastest. Detroit had barely had its first look at the automobile when R.E. Olds built his Olds Motor Works on River Street, near the Belle Isle Bridge. Olds picked the site because it was close to shipping routes like rivers and railroads, foundries, tool and die shops, manufacturing materials, and other manufacturing plants. Ford had built his first plants on Mack Avenue, then on Piquette Avenue, close to the Olds factory. But anticipating the demand for his Model T, Ford set up a factory in Highland Park in 1910, which had lots of room for development. By 1927, this plant employed over 60,000 people. A few years earlier, in 1922, a rapidly growing General Motors had built their enormous corporate headquarters on West Grand Boulevard. At the time, it was the second largest office building in the world. The rapidly expanding auto industry needed more space and spread outwards beyond Detroit's city limits. In 1910, the Dodge brothers found their home in Hamtramck. They had built several factories there to provide parts for Henry Ford's Highland Park plant and then decided to make cars themselves. Meanwhile, Henry Ford was planning the construction of an enormous new factory and headquarters in Dearborn. The River Rouge plant opened in 1917 and swiftly became the world's largest manufacturing facility. Walter P. Chrysler built his first Chrysler car in 1924 and bought up the Dodge Company in 1928. He then packed up his headquarters and moved to Highland Park, joining Henry Ford in this busy automobile industry community. 
The industry experienced a lull during the 1930s, but after Pearl Harbor was bombed in 1941, Detroit's automakers suddenly needed new assembly lines to make material for the United States war effort, and that meant finding new land for new factories. Ford built the Willow Run plant on farmland near the small town of Ypsilanti and produced over 8,000 B-24 bombers. At the height of the war, Willow Run was making one bomber every hour. Chrysler chose Warren as the site to build tanks for the U.S. Army. The 1950s brought a new prosperity to Detroit as its population reached an all-time high and its suburbs experienced huge growth. General Motors opened its massive technical center in Warren during this time. After a period of closing plants during the 70s and 80s, the industry bounced back. In 1991, Chrysler opened its technical center in Auburn Hills, employing over 7,000 people. Chrysler went on to open their new world headquarters here in 1995. Henry Ford's original River Rouge plant continues to employ thousands of people. Their main office is also in Dearborn. And Final Assembly is the name of the game today at the Cadillac plant that straddles Hamtramck in Detroit. In fact, cars, trucks, and parts are made in Livonia, Warren, Redford, and many of the other towns that surround Detroit. And there are technical centers in such cities as Troy, Ann Arbor, Southfield, and Madison Heights. 100 years after the first automobile, Michigan is still producing over 20% of America's cars and trucks and ideas for the future from downtown offices, in huge suburban plants and tech centers, and now in facilities throughout the world.